Whimsically Musical Teachers, it is March, which means it is time for March Madness. All the basketball type things and activities to do in your music room. I don't know about you, but a lot of kids at my school, in fact, basketball is the main sport that happens at my school, and so a lot of students pay attention to it, especially during March Madness times with all the NBA games and all that sort of stuff. So I thought, what better way to get them really engaged in what we're doing in class by having basketball themed related activities, hence March Madness. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you a lot of different ideas for activities that I have done in my classroom or that I want to do in my classroom that are all centered around basketball, March Madness, sports, in some way. So if you're interested in that, please stay tuned. For those who don't know me, my name's Rainey Barden. I teach elementary music and middle school musical theater in Central Florida. It's my eighth year teaching and I created this channel to help other music teachers inspire a love of, of music, a love and appreciation of music in the heart of every child. And we do that through this channel with lesson plan ideas and tips and tricks and strategies and activities and all the things that you can utilize in your classroom as early as tomorrow. So if you're interested in that, please like and subscribe. It really helps my channel grow and I appreciate each and every one of you. I have about seven activities that I'm going to share with you super quick in this video. Some I have made, some of them have come from other awesome, amazing music educators. So anybody that I have pulled inspiration from or used their materials personally, I will link in the description underneath this video because I'm all about giving credit where credit is due. And so with that, we're just going to dive in to the different activities that you could utilize in your classroom to celebrate March Madness with your elementary music students. The first one that is probably my favorite that my students ask for all the time is music trash get ball. And it is exactly what it sounds like it is. It is trash get ball. And so what I do is I have, I've actually created an entire like product line for all of the different rhythms for trash get balls. So I will link that under here and I'll show a couple clips of what it looks like. It's basically just like a question game where I have like 30 questions on the board. Each student gets to take a turn on their team picking one of the questions. They get the question asked. They have to answer it. If they get it right, then they receive a point for their team. And so if they get the question right, and it always centers around whatever rhythm I'm focusing on for the month. So in this example, I'm showing slides for Chigga Chigga or 16th notes. Once they get it right, their team is allowed to then take a trash ball or a trash, like a piece of paper that they, you know, trash ball, basketball, and toss it into the bucket that I'm holding at the front of the room. And I have dots on my floor. I have five colored dots. They want just like a typical a two-pointer in basketball, then they stand on the first dot, and if they want to do a free throw, which gets them, I think, three points. Trust me, I'm not a basketball girly, so if I'm saying all this wrong, sorry. Then they stand three dots away, and that's, like, the free throw one. And so, and then we do, like, a Hail Mary one, where if they want to stand on the very last one in the back and get four points, they can toss it. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. And so some kids will be like, no, just go from the easy one. And some will be like, I want to take it all the way but they'll get extra points depending on that. And if they miss, then they miss, and it is what it is. But each team will take turns, and they'll go through all of the questions until the questions are lost. And then if I want to, I always like kind of doing a final Jeopardy style one where I like ask a question and they all get to answer and they can bet their points and then like whichever one gets it right at the end wins. And so that's how I use trash ball in my classroom. I kid you not, my students ask for this all the time because they have so much fun with this. I make, I mean, I do it at different times throughout the year when we learn new musical concepts, but I always make sure to really reinforce it around March Madness time because it just fits the theme so well. But like I said, I do have a product for this. I will link that underneath this video in case you are interested. I also have for free already my quarter and eighth note bundle, or not bundle. I also already have for free a sample of my quarter and eighth note trash ball version, which if you are on my email list, you already have access to this in the free resource library. If you don't, you can opt into the free resource library underneath this video. I have tons of different uh, games and activities, and some of them are on TPT, but some of them are not. And so it's always nice to have a bunch of extra freebies at your disposal that you can use in your classroom. So I'll link to the opt-in underneath here as well. And since it's March Madness and it involves a basketball, you could use a basketball in your classroom for different activities, whether it be ball songs or rhythm basketball. So with rhythm basketball, uh, this is Pitch Publication already has a bunch of music basketball themed activities where basically they took a song and they break it down into like different sections like the verse, the chorus, the bridge, and they have different uh, basically basketball choreography kind of like think get your head in the game from like Troy Bolton high school musical era. It's kind of to that effect but they already have it pre-made for you. So if you're like, oh, awesome, I want that, go click underneath this video and find all of them. You could also make them up yourself. I have made them up before. I don't have any slide examples right now to show you my plan. 
is to maybe actually finally make one that I've made before. But you could do that super easily, like having anything just as simple as like on the verse they're doing bounce, catch, toss, and toss. Bounce, catch, toss, and toss. Or maybe to a partner they're going toss and dribble and toss and dribble. You could make it super easy, but if you're like, I don't have the capacity or the time to make one up on my own, Pitch Publications has got your back, y'all. And I have used theirs before, and theirs are excellent day, if I may say so myself. And as far as ball songs go, I have two songs for you that you could use in your classroom that actually use a basketball. Or not a basketball, but they could. And the first one actually works perfect for March because it's actually a St. Patrick's Day Irish song, and so you can be knocking two birds with one stone and using it for March Madness and also for St. Patrick's Day. And that's one, two, three, O'Leary. Oh, and so that song goes like this. One, two, three, O'Leary, oh, four, five, six, O'Leary, oh, seven, eight, nine, O'Leary, oh, ten, O'Leary, oh, caught it. And so all you do is you have your students in groups and um, they will each have a basketball at the front of their line. And the first student on one, two, they bounce and catch, and then they put it over their head on um, three O'Leary. And then the next one goes four, five, and they put it over their head as well. Six O'Leary, seven, eight, nine O'Leary, 10 O'Leary, caught it. And then whoever has it on caught it, has to run all the way to the back of their line and all the kids have to have their legs open and they roll the ball through the middle all the way to their legs open and whichever team gets it to the front of their line first wins. And so it's a fun little like obstacle course type of game. And then the game just starts over again and you have a new person. So it's always bounce, catch, over your head. 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 And then the last person runs to the end. They open the legs, boop, 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 boop and off you go. So that's a super fun one. My kids always have fun with that one every year, so I highly recommend that, but that's one that you could use with a basketball. And you could also do the song Bounce High in your classroom, which that song literally just goes, bounce high, bounce low, bounce the ball to Shiloh, bounce high, bounce low, bounce the ball to Shiloh. And that one is one that I typically use just to reinforce steady beat in my classroom. And then I think I also use it for teaching law. So this could be a good one to use for like end of first grade, beginning of second grade, depending on when you introduce law into your classroom. But that one is literally, there's two different ways you could do it. You could have it in a circle where you're doing it, one person, one student is in charge of it the whole time, and at the end, instead of pass the ball to Shiloh, they pass it to someone else. You could be doing it where each person is bouncing to the person next to them in a circle. You could do it where they have partners and they're just bouncing from one student back and forth just to reinforce that steady beat and also introduce law if you want to. Uh, but those are two different ball games that you could use in your classroom for March Madness. And of course, we also have one of my favorite games, which is Write the Room. I do have a basketball March Madness themed version where it's just basketball kids and basketballs and hoops and all the things as the pictures. But if you don't know what Write the Room is, I have an entire video dedicated to that, so I will link to that underneath this description. Basically, Write the Room Super easy way to assess rhythm. You have like rhythms hidden throughout the room on the wall and the students have to go around with the picture. Um, they have a piece of paper that has a picture of each one they're looking for. When they find the matching picture, they write the rhythm on that line and they go all around and so they're practicing notating rhythms, which is actually really important because a lot of students I've learned don't realize that it's really important to color in your quarter and eighth notes and stuff because otherwise they either look like half notes or they're not actually a real note because they have to be colored in. So that helps me reinforce that. It helps me introduce like rest and how to draw that, which I always teach rest. It's just the letter Z and a C underneath. That tends to do the trick pretty well. I also just say a lightning bolt is acceptable because, you know, it is what it is. But Write the Room is always a super easy fun one. It's a fun challenge. It can take like five to ten minutes of class. It's easy to prep. You just print out the sheets, put the stuff on the walls, off you go. But why not do it for all the different times of year? That's just what I'm saying last two that I have are music brackets. And so we're going to talk about a Women's History Month one, and then we're going to talk about an instrument bracket one. Because if you didn't know, March is also Women's History Month. And I am all about cutting two birds or killing two birds with one stone and just utilizing all the things at once. So we already talked about how you can incorporate St. Patrick's Day into this. Now we're going to talk about how you can incorporate Women's History Month into this. 
And how I do that is through a fun bracket style challenge. And so I will have a bracket on the board, basically, of different artists that are vying, musical artists, female artists, that are vying for a spot to win who is the best female artist of all time according to that class. And I put new people and I put old people. So for example, I have musicians like Aretha Franklin, Stevie Nicks, because she's my favorite, Celine Dion, Taylor Swift, Shania Twain, Beyonce, Adele. I have all different types of people so they're getting exposed to all different types of music. And so I'll have two people compete against each other. The students will decide on which one they liked better and that person will go to the next round. They vote through all of the initial rounds, then they vote through like the semi-finalists, and then they vote for the finalists. Um, my kids have a lot of fun with this. You could do this in two different ways. You could just do it as a group activity where they do it on the screen um, and you all vote together as a class. Or you could do it where each student has the bracket on the floor in front of them and they are voting individually. And then that way you can see like, oh, this person actually voted for this person as the winner. And this person voted for this person as the winner. And then it kind of like allows you to see what their tastes are comparatively as opposed to like a classroom perspective. So I absolutely love that. I do have a product for this in my shop. So if you are interested in that, I will link to that underneath here as well. But I'm all about celebrating women's history. So you might as well do it with a March Madness flavor to it. And then I also have used Becca's Music Room's instrument music bracket. I love this one. And so I will link to that under here. But basically it's kind of the same idea, but she does it with instruments of like the orchestral family. And so they'll listen to like a flute example and a clarinet example, and they have to vote on which one's better. Every year I hope that the oboe will make its way to win, but it never does because oboe is my instrument. But they have this really cool triangle solo in it that's like hilarious and my kids think it's so funny and they're like how is a triangle going to be my favorite instrument but like that solo is not a joke friend it's not a joke so i also have used that one as well and so i will link that under here i'm pretty sure she also has a jazz musicians one that i believe is free so i'll link to both of her um instrument music brackets in there because i have used them and i really really enjoy them but anyway obviously you have to have a bracket if you're going to do March Madness. And so those are all of the activities that I have for you to celebrate March Madness in your classroom. Like I said, I'm going to link to all of the different people underneath this video that I have pulled inspiration from or used their activities from. So like Pitch Publications, Becca's Music Room, all of that sort of stuff. And then I will also link to my Trash Cabal Music Rhythm sets below, my Women's History Month Basketball Bracket game down below, and then all of the ones from Pitch Publications and Becca and whatnot. And then if you want that free quarter and eighth note trash cabal one, make sure to opt in to my email down below. Unless you're already on it, then you should have it in your free resource library. So go take a check. Where's the password? In every email I send you every Tuesday morning. All right, with that, I will see you guys in next week's video. I hope you have all the fun teaching these in your classroom. Bye.